Hello everybody and welcome to our studio show here, round three of the FIM MX Motocross World Championship, MXGP and MX2, where our studio guests today will be Jeremy Siwa from uh, Rockstar Energy Suzuki Europe, Adam Wheeler on trackoffroad.com, and a little later on we've got Roman Fevre from Yamaha Factory Racing, and Roger Harvey, HRC General Manager. So uh, obviously some top guests again this weekend and uh, we'll talk to Jeremy in just a moment but before we get going let's just remind ourselves as to what happened three weeks ago in the MX Grand Prix of Thailand. Here's some highlights from uh, race two in MX2. They were in the waiting zone getting ready to go race. Tim Geiser was suffering from heat exhaustion after the first race. He went to the doctor, requested an IV drip. But you can hear the FIM race director there saying he was sorry, but he would not be able to start race two. And you can see the disappointment on the faces of the Honda Garibaldi team all around. None of this a concern though for Jeffrey Hurlings, the winner of race one, as he took his position in the gate alongside his teammate, number 41, Bols Jonas, and the 189 of Brian Borges of the Netherlands on the HSF Logistics KTM, who got off to a flying start. The three Kawasakis were pretty much lined up side by side as they charged into the first turn, but once again, it was Hurlings with the Fox hole shot. Brian Borges, who we're here with on board with the GoPro, found himself in second position but eventually he would fade into 11th by the time the chequered flag fell, but it was still a good result for the MX2 rookie. Paul's Jonas having a much better ride this time out, tried to keep his Red Bull KTM in the wheel tracks of his teammate Jeffrey Hurlings. Covington was third for a while. Julian Lieber, despite that big crash in race one, found his standing constructs Yamaha, Yamalu machine in fourth, and then a mistake from Covington allowed the young Belgian rider through into third. Ferrandis also went through, and Covington dropped two positions in the space of a lap. Jeffrey Hurlings, though, took the chequered flag for another win. That's six wins on the bounce now in the three occasions that we've been here to Thailand. Of course, Jeffrey Hurlings, an overall winner here this weekend. Jonas was second. In the race, Julian Lieber was third, and your overall Grand Prix, of course, belonged to Geoffrey Hurlings in what was a Red Bull KTM 1-2. Dylan Ferrandis third on the Monster Energy Kawasaki. Of course, Geoffrey Hurlings, 100 points on the board. He's won every race so far in 2015. Well, that was three weekends ago in Thailand. This week, though, we're in Argentina. Patagonia is the region. And a brand new circuit once again. And my next guest here, Jeremy C. with Rockstar Energy Suzuki Europe, joins us now. And I have to say, he's looking a little bit better than he was uh, three weeks ago, especially after that first race. We'll talk about the crash in a moment, but it was a difficult weekend for you in Thailand, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. But uh, I think the main thing was that I was sick just uh, Friday before the race, so yeah, on Sunday it was still in me, I was still not feeling 100% and uh, that was the reason why this happened, I think, yeah, you never know, but uh, yeah, that was the, the thing why everything went wrong. Well, we do have footage from the GoPro actually, um, as you were riding around, this is it now, look, coming through the waves, off the back, just talk us through it, how were you feeling at this point before the crash? Yeah, I felt actually pretty good. I had a good race. I came from f around 18 back to 6th and then uh, just before the finish line I saw already the flag and then it's like someone put a hammer on you and yeah, you just crash, you don't even know why and then you're lying there and you can't move the bike and nothing anymore. So. Yeah, it happened so quick and now I can't be angry on myself. I made no mistake. It just just happened so quick I, I couldn't 
yeah, change it before or, or, or ride slower to the finish. It wasn't possible. So. But the interesting thing about that, just before we cut away, just shortly after that, you did fall down. You pretty much collapsed due to the heat. Um, so at that point, you were just so physically exhausted, you couldn't get on the bike. Where, where were you? Did you even know where you were in the race at that time? At that time, no. I don't, I don't knew where I were. So now I can remember this exactly. But uh, at this time, I was somewhere else. I was in another world, like uh, just not here. <laughs> And if the video goes on, the viewers at home probably hear it better than we can, but we hear it's almost like a, a movie scene, you know, where a, a soldier maybe has just been brought down by bullets and, and, and shot in, in, a, in a battlefield, like now you've just crashed. And people running to your aid, calling your name, and we hear just underneath it all, you calling for water. Um, it's, it's a bizarre video, and to watch it, really, really heartbreaking for us. Yeah, it's... Uh for me now to watch it it's pretty tough because yeah I see it the first time but yeah what can I do it happened now I'm here I'm healthy and that's the thing counting so well, I actually <laughs> I was standing 20 meters away from when you crashed there and it was I've never seen scenes like it actually in a Grand Prix because Jordi Tixe you know fell off in the same spot I mean it was uh, it was quite incredible but like you say from that video there and also from my experience that I haven't seen any riders struggling to cope with conditions like that for a few years I mean, it was almost 40 degrees. Do you reckon that was the hottest Grand Prix you, well, certainly you've had only in your second season? But it was uh, it was pretty phenomenal, the conditions, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. For me, actually, I don't realize that I was, I'm pretty fit at the moment, so it was okay for me. I was not like, this heat, how can I manage this heat? I was pretty sure I'm going to make it. And I felt pretty safe and fit. So, yeah, and then it came that quick, like I told. But, uh, yeah, after this... Actually, you need to think a little bit about, and then yeah, for next time we know when it is like this, we have to be prepared for stuff like that. Obviously, it's difficult to prepare for races like that so early in the Euro, you know, in the in the season because Europe, the weather is so cold and wet and snowy, completely different, almost 40 degrees that day. But um, you weren't able to make the second race. How soon was it, or how long was it before you kind of had some familiarity again about where you were? It took pretty long actually because my, the feeling I had in the medical center was the worst I ever got. You really thinking about dying when you are lying on that floor there. It's it's pretty bad because you don't know anything what happened and you can't move yourself. You don't get any air. So and I guess confusion as well. Yeah, that's true. And then yeah, I came back. I think when the second Amix uh, two race started, just like half an hour before to the pits to my team, but still. I couldn't walk straight like I was drunk so then I sit it down and then they ask me ah yeah if everything is okay and I was like I couldn't even answer a question it was difficult to me to say a sentence because yeah my brain was still not not there so it took me till yeah I think after MX2 race or MX, even MX1 till I was pretty stable and good again yeah well you weren't the only one were you because obviously Tim Geiser Jordi Tixier uh, also failed to make the start of the race and it was pretty interesting because you're riding a factory Suzuki Tim Geiser on a factory Honda Tixier the world champion and on a factory Kawasaki and we had to have a statement issued by the FIM which I have here um, that was re uh, issued recently uh, because Jordi Tixier not able to start this weekend um, Basically, three riders, Jordi Tixier, Jeremy Sewer, and Tim Geiser, all suffered from heat stroke and dehydration and were declared unfit by the medical officer, the chief medical officer of the FIM. And uh, they were forbid forbidden to take part in the second race in accordance with the FIM medical code. Now, from Jordi Tixier's point of view, while receiving his treatment, he physically attacked the chief medical officer and uh, FIM medical director, which is considered unacceptable behavior and in breach of the FIM Motocross World Championship regulations. Um, and in a hearing later on, Jordi Tixier did admit the fact. So he's been fined. He's got a, a one month suspension, which means he misses this race, just in case you're wondering where he is. So, you know, quite a hefty sanction. But at the same time, you, you can't just go around uh, uh, physically attacking people. But you know what it was like to be in that situation in terms of that state of bewilderment and confusion. Yeah, like I said, I, at this moment you are not yourself because you, you don't know what you are doing. You, you even don't know that you raised the race. You are just lying there and try to, to get out of this. So, yeah, you do actually everything you could or you can uh, that you, you, you get good again in this moment. The body tries to survive. So, yeah, 
I was pretty. The people told me that I was pretty aggressive as well, but yeah, I don't know. To to like Tixie, I don't know the story, but yeah. uh, I can't make a comment about this. So. But I think also to put it into perspective, Jeremy, I mean, you're only at the start of your second Grand Prix season. You know, you're in the best shape you've ever had because you stopped studying, you finish your studies, you're a full-time pro now. So racing in those conditions is another new experience in Grand Prix for you, isn't it? Because it's already been last year, now this year, as a factory Suzuki rider. There's still so much for you to learn, isn't there? Yeah, it's still a lot to learn. And uh, like last year, Thailand, it was pretty hot and warm as well. But there I was on other niveau I can say now uh, to race against with the top five is something else you have to be there 35 minutes so every lap it's it's fighting so I think that's the point and uh, that's why uh, it's getting more tough and yeah you still have to learn every GP now but we're almost out of time with you but um, the start of the season though has been pretty good it's been generally positive hasn't it Qatar first race you started third ran there for um, a couple of laps eventually came home in fifth place but um, we've got some footage here from Qatar uh, the night race again how were you feeling coming into this race were you feeling good in your you know in your preparation yeah I felt pretty good like I said I'm a pro now so I have a, a, enough time to prepare myself yeah, it's always a little bit before the first race, you are wondering, wondering yeah, where I am, what the other guys did. But uh, yeah, like, as I saw in Qatar, my speed is pretty good, my physical condition is good, my starts are good. So my goal is to, to be around top five all the time. And uh, I saw it in Qatar, this is, uh, I hope it's going to happen. I, I have everything to de do this. So I'm And fifth is your equal best finish, isn't it? So you did that already uh, in Qatar. So for the first race and, and to get like equal, you know, career best is not too bad. So yeah, maybe this the rest is uh, perfect. Actually, I was pretty happy with my first first moto, not first race, because in the second one I I made a few mistakes, but uh, yeah, still everything went pretty well. Outside podium shot for me, Paul. Yeah, this I'll weekend. Say, I'll say no, this weekend, definitely this season. I'm okay. Say on the TV show now, Jeremy Sue on the podium this year. At some point during the season, maybe even in Trentino. <laughs> you had a good ride there last yeah, year. Trentino, uh, I don't know why. I don't like the track so much because it's pretty rocky and yeah, slippery and strange to ride. But yeah, I don't know why. The last two years I went pretty, I did pretty good uh, races there. So. And well, anyway, look, um, Jeremy Sewa, we are out of time uh, of our studio show this weekend with you in particular. So uh, Jeremy Sewa, Rockstar Energy Suzuki Europe. Um, Good to see you're okay after Thailand a couple of weeks ago, but good to see you back here and hopefully we see you, you know, with two good races like you've had in, in Qatar at the opening round of the uh, championship season. Jeremy's here, everybody. Right, before we meet our next guest, let's find out what happened in the MXGP of Thailand three weeks ago. Here's some highlights from race two in the MXGP class. His victory in race one, Ryan Villapoto was looking to make it a clean sweep here in Thailand. When the gate dropped, he found himself being squeezed to the right-hand side of the bank by Commander Sao as Tony Cairoli took the fox hole shot. Dean Ferris made a good start. He came out second as Ryan Villapoto got pushed back a few more positions in the next couple of corners. Cairoli led from De Sao. Van Horbeek was in third for Yamaha Factory Racing and the Monster Energy Kawasaki of number two, Ryan Villapoto. Had to wait another couple of laps out before he could find his way into third. The Belgian making it very difficult for the American rider in the opening stages of the race, but a simple slip allowed Villapoto to go around the outside and he was through into third. De Salle was just ahead of him in the next turn and Kai Rowley just another two seconds further down the track. But despite his blistering pace in Saturday's qualifying and race one, Lepoto didn't really have anything, but Roma Fevre certainly had something for his teammate, Jeremy Van Horbeek, made a pass on the Belgian to go fourth. Van Horbeek dropped to fifth and a couple of laps later dropped out of the race. Gauthier Paulant had another bad start, but worked his way through the field, made a way past Todd Waters, that got him up into sixth, and that's where he would stay. But Tony Cairoli, though, 
took the chequered flag his first race win of the season to sell was second Filippoto was third and with it he took his first ever MXGP Grand Prix victory yeah yeah no it's good you know uh, not what we wanted the second moto but um, you know it's hot and uh, those are good points so you know we just keep chugging away at it it's long season so uh, you know Tony and and uh, Clement rode they rode really good so um, you know can't take anything away from them Official confirmation then, Ryan Villapoto wins it with 45 points. The Sal second on 44, Kai Rowley third on 41. But the Sal is the new championship leader after two rounds. Kai Rowley moves up to second, Nagel drops to third. Villapoto now climbs to fourth. And what a great day it was then for Ryan Villapoto and Monster Energy Kawasaki here in Thailand. Equally so for Commander Sal, Tony Kai Rowley takes his first win of the year as well with that victory in race two. Welcome back to our studio show here in Patagonia, Argentina. As you can see, my next guest is here, Roman Fevre from Yamaha Factory Racing. He was just out on track a moment ago doing the GoPro track preview lap for us. Uh, Roman, welcome to Argentina. Welcome to MXGP. How is the track here? Yeah, uh, welcome. And uh, yeah, the track is really nice. Uh, I mean, it's, it's wide and uh, with the 450, it's really nice. The jump are pretty big, and uh, but it's kind of strange. So, uh, the ground, uh, I was thinking it would be more grippy than this, but uh, it's really slippery, And uh, but anyway, it's nice. Is it harder as well, more firm? Did you think it was going to be more soft? Yeah, I was thinking it would be more soft, but uh, on the underneath it's really hard. So when uh, the sand on the top is gone and uh, we catch the hard and uh, don't make so many lines, so we need to turn like, yeah, it's the first practice, but we need to turn like speedway, let's say, and. Uh, so it's a little bit difficult. Obviously, 2015, you're on a brand new team, Yamaha Factory Racing, in MXGP as well. And your career before this, seen you on KTMs and Husqvarna's the last few years. Um, how difficult has it been adapting to the big bike and also to the Japanese uh, Yamaha? Yeah, uh, yeah, it was a big change uh, this winter for me, but uh, yeah, I'm really happy. Uh, we work really hard on the bike. I mean, uh, yeah, it's a big judgment, new brand, new team, new class, but uh, yeah, I like uh, the Japanese bike. So uh, yeah, with the Yamaha, it was, uh, we make some progress on the bike for me. We adapt the bike for me and, uh, but yeah, it's going really good. So I'm really happy. I think some people have been surprised about how fast you've been, you know, from the first Grand Prix. I mean, you've been beating your teammate who was runner up in the World Championship last year. Uh, are you kind of surprised? I mean, being yeah. top, top three, top four, top five, is that no, kind of all? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised myself also because, uh, well, I mean, I was thinking the other guys would be faster. So uh, just, uh, and I had a yeah, quite difficult winter with my uh, yeah, d most injury. I had the back, I had the shoulder. So uh, it was not the easiest winter I had, but uh, yeah. It's going really good. Uh, I hope to keep this pace uh, during all the season. What about, obviously you're ve feeling very comfortable. You just missed the podium um, in Thailand a couple of weeks ago, but when we'll see some footage of that shortly, but there's no pressure from the team for you to, uh, at the beginning of the season, you know, what, what was their expectation of you? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, for the team, uh, they really didn't put any pressure on myself and also on Jeremy. It's just, uh, they are really relaxed and, uh, they know with the experience if they put too much pressure on one rider, yeah, maybe it's easier to make a mistake or something in the in the brain. It's not so good to to be always under pressure. So uh, I think they are used to it and just uh, they say, yeah, ride, enjoy your riding. You train, yeah. They know we train really hard, so uh, they just I think they have some confidence and they say just yeah, keep going and it would be. 
Of course, Yamaha have this unusual record pool uh, of, uh, you know, first riders coming into the team for the first time. 2008, David Phillip Arts won the World Championship his first season. Yeah. 2011, Stephen Frossard, first season runner-up in the World Championship. And then also with Van Horbig last year in 2014. Is that something you kind of think about, Roman? Do you think, well, OK, no pressure on me. My first season, I'm just an MXGP rookie. But then again, you know, you're in a team where they've excelled in pushing new riders right to the top of, of the standings. Yeah, I was not... Yeah, you say that now, but uh, I, I was not looking uh, yeah, like before for Yamaha. They, it's true, they, they, with all the writers, the first year, they are pretty good. They finish pretty good. But I'm not looking that, just uh, I know myself and uh, I know the team. It's going pretty good each, yeah, better every race. But uh, yeah, it's a long season. Uh, I try to, to don't become let's say crazy on the bike and uh, just because I finished fourth in Thailand and just uh, maybe this uh, this weekend it will be eight or ten and the next just I want to keep going and uh, to to keep progress and uh, to don't make so many mistakes. Well it was a great start for you wasn't it in Qatar six and seventh I think it was uh, six overall second race battling with Ryan Villapoto how was the first round for you and you know and all the results as well yeah qatar was uh, yeah pretty good uh, already pretty good because uh, i finished 6 and 7 so uh, yeah i'm i was already happy with that the team also and uh, but i mean for qatar it was my place uh, i was not able to to catch the guys on the front and uh, behind me uh, you have some 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 gap so uh, it was let yeah let's say my place and uh, just Qatar uh, was better and uh, with the hot condition was really difficult for yeah everyone but uh, I had uh, some good start and just I passed the guys on the front and uh, third uh, it was also my place uh, Clement and Villopoto was was. Yeah, more fast than me, so uh, it was not possible to catch uh, those guys. But uh, behind, uh, he had also some gaps, so it was my place. But it was say. good for you in MX2 as well, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's true. So uh, just yeah, keep going, and it will be good at the end of the season. And in Thailand, then um, one weekend later, completely different conditions. We started the year at the night race in Qatar, not too hot, obviously, it was fairly cool. But then one week later, we go to Thailand, 40 degrees, the toughest race of the year so far, yet you had your best result of the year so far, uh, fourth overall. Um, you must have been pretty happy with how that weekend went. Yeah, sure, sure. I was I was pretty happy about the result, and uh, yeah, it's the toughest GP uh, of the season. So when it's passed and good, then it's uh, you are really happy. And uh, yeah, it was tough for everyone. We are not used to, to this weather, it's not possible. And uh, yeah, just uh, yeah, it was really good for me. Third and a fourth, fourth overall, beat your teammate as well as Adam mentioned earlier. That's got to be a big boost of confidence for you. Yeah, sure. After uh, yeah, I know my teammate. He had a big crash on the first moto, and uh, yeah, with the hot condition, he could not see so good. So uh, yeah, it was not uh, like uh, his usual riding, let's say. So. Uh, it was pretty tough for him, I know, uh, but yeah, I beat, I beat uh, many guys uh, on this race, so I was pretty happy about my speed. Just a quick question about your potential, Roman, because many people might not know that your rise in Grand Prix has been very fast, very quick. I mean, you haven't been here since you were like, you know, 14, 15, 16 years old. You've, you know, every year you've made a, a significant step up in results and championship position. I mean, it's, it's almost like you're this uh, firework that's going very fast through Grand Prix. But, you know, how do you kind of feel? Do you feel you're like 60, 70 percent of what you can achieve here? I don't know. It's difficult to say. Uh, just, uh, yeah, it's true. Every year so I'm, I progress myself. And also, I think I have more experience with the bike. I, even if I change the, the, the brand and the team, I have more experience to set up the bike to, yeah, because I I just come back on the motocross in 2010, so uh, I lost uh, many years. But uh, I think it it, it gave me some uh, some I don't know to to say, but uh, some 
uh, I don't know how to like say appreciation uh, or yeah like uh, I want to to be to be good and I think uh, with the when I stopped the motocross in 2006 and I went to supermoto uh, I want to come back in motocross and I'm more maybe uh, motivated yeah mot yeah exactly that's the word motivated then maybe if I if I if I don't stop the motocross before and I continue, maybe I was I would yeah. be not riding in in MGP, you yeah. know. So uh, give me some more motivation, and I'm yeah I'm happy for my okay. yeah progress. Okay. Yeah. Well, look, we are pretty much out of time with you, Roman. But uh, before we go, the goal at the beginning of the season, what was it, and has it now changed because you've had a podium race finish, and you're this close to taking a podium? So has the goal changed? No, no. Uh, I mean, from from I don't know. Uh, I don't want to talk uh, for the team. I don't know what they expect for me. Uh, but for me, I have no, not, yeah, not the goal or something. Just uh, I want to, to progress all the year. I, to, I want to have a consistent season. And uh, just, just that's it. I don't want to finish. In, I don't know. I don't know also myself. I don't want to say top 10, top 8, top 5. I don't know. Just uh, keep going. Don't look. Yeah. The season it's so long. It's uh, 16 GPs to go. So uh, f yeah, even if I uh, fifth uh, now, uh, maybe it will be. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say. All right. Well, look, Roman Fevre, Yamaha Factory Racing. Thanks for joining us up here. Thank All you. the best for this weekend. Of course, the rest of the season as well. Yeah. And uh, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Right, competition time again, folks. And if you've been following MXGP for the last couple of weekends, then you know we've got a fantastic prize up for greps. And basically, it's uh, Athena or Get, this competition. So take a picture at the MXGP race showing the uh, Get or Athena logo. Upload the picture with the MXGP hashtag or uh, hashtag Athena Live on MXGP Facebook page. And then, of course, the most, most voted pick at the end of race day will win some Ojo goodies, a backpack to start with, but you will proceed to the next step in the competition where eventually you will win the RIG 9800 uh, Ojo gear bag. The top three during the race season will qualify for the 2015 Athena photo competition. And after the Motocross Nations, the finalists will go head to head to win more fantastic prizes. So, of course, good luck with that. And... Uh, we will see you guys, you lucky winners, at the Motocross of Nations, which will be a, an a, amazing event at the end of the year as well at Erne. Well, our uh, final guest has joined us, uh, HRC General Manager Roger Harvey. Uh, good to see you. A little bit cooler than it was in Thailand, <laughs> but you're still wearing your shorts, typical Brit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, it's, um, it's just beautiful, isn't it? The whole thing here, so, uh, yeah, wear the shorts when you come. We're going back to Europe soon. But what do you make of the MXGP season so far? The night race in Qatar, the heat of Thailand, um, just in general, have, have there been any surprises for you? Yes or no? Um, I don't think there's really been any surprises. Uh, uh, you know, the, the big build-up between Caroli and Villapoto, yeah, that w you know, but we haven't actually seen it yet, so uh, maybe that's this weekend, you know, when we get them going head-to-head. -head. Um, also, from our side with uh, Paulin, we're expecting him to be mixing it in there with him, you know, and he's got to get used to a new team, new bike, everything, so... That's the process that's going on now. Um, so yeah, you know, we're, we're, uh, what we've seen so far, I think, is it's been a hell of a teaser, you know. Mm. For me, Paul, I think it's the, the diversity we've had so far in the championship, Roger. We've had like a night race, essentially a spectacle for television. The heat of Thailand, which is very special, probably unmatched by anything else on the calendar. And now here in Argentina, you've got a real, an incredible vibe from the crowd already piled in for Saturday. Um, you know, a brand new track, fantastic weather, an amazing location. It's um, I don't know, you've, we've had a little bit of kind of everything, haven't we, some of these first three races? Already, already we have. The, the, the night races, you know, at, at uh, Qatar, that's that's very special, you know, and, and quite a nice way to start the season, I think. You know, it's strange finishing off at midnight, one o'clock in the morning. Um, yeah, the heat in Thailand, phew, that was hard work for the boys. But, uh, you know, that's their job. That's what they get on with. And then here, like you say, we're here on Saturday and the people are still piling in. So uh, that's going to be a real early start tomorrow morning, you know, because uh, even that many people... Getting in the track. Oh, <laughs> Well, we left the hotel Absolutely. at half, 
half eight this morning and we're only 4K down the road. We got 2K away from the track and we were already parked. We needed a police escort to get yep. in. Yeah, we had and, the same. And people were dive bombing that as well. You know, think, exactly. well, if you can do it, we can do it. So we're on it. It's going to be uh, busy getting in here tomorrow. But you did mention Gautier Paulan, new signing for you this year. Yes. Happy with everything? Ha happy with how he's working? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, everything's obviously good. Obviously, he's been with you before. Uh, yeah, in many Europeans, years ago. Many years ago. Many so years ago. Anything changed? Um, no, he's he's a real methodical guy, um, really serious guy. Um, and goes about his job very, very professionally, you know. So, uh, yeah, and it's, it's basically just settling down to everything with the new team. The new bike, it's a different bike for him. So, um, yeah, and, and we're tailoring in that to suit him, you know. Yeah. So, But we're, we're getting feedback from America and Japan as well to help move the thing along quickly. I mean, with respect to the previous rise you've had, Roger, I mean, Gautier is almost like, not a step up, but it's certainly a bigger profile, isn't it, in terms of going for a world championship? Yes. It's like, uh, I don't know, that there is expectation there on Gautier, isn't it, after winning MXGPs for the past three seasons? Within the team, within HRC, there's expectation on us all now. Um, yeah, and that was, you know, the, the, one of the reasons why we, we were interested in Gautier. Um, and we believe that, uh, you know, he has the full package to win a world title. So that's why he's been signed and that's what we're going forward with, you know. Are you happy with the start to the season? Uh, a fourth and a third, third overall uh, in Qatar. Good. Um, you know, okay, team managers, team owners don't really put pressure. It's maybe the riders that put pressure on themselves. But yeah. going into that race, we've seen him win there last year. He was still on the podium. Um, didn't really sort of go with the front runners. He was maybe a little bit off the pace. Was it a case for him just to get some decent points on the board, knowing that you can't win the championship in the first round, but you can certainly lose it? Yeah, exactly. As you know, we're working with John Michel Bale. Um, and his history, and he's putting a bit of his history into the team, you know, into the way Paulin's working and, and building up also Bobby. Um, so the plan is to be podium all the time. Okay, it didn't happen in Thailand. We'll talk about that in a moment. But uh, for Qatar, that, that was all the plan. You've got to be on, on or around the podium all the time, all year, to be in with a shout at the end. What about Evgeny Bobrashev, Roger? I mean, he's been a Honda rider for five years now, four yep. with a factory outfit. Um, you know, you, you retain him again for 2015. I mean, he's almost like building his way back up, isn't he? Because yeah. uh, there, has there been an unlucky rider of injury? I, I, I I don't, don't, there's not I'd, many names I can think history, of. Not in history, no. And, and like such awkward injuries, you know, like uh, he was out testing the last day of testing two years ago and just touched the toe in the floor, sh broke a, a bone in the ankle. Uh, then last year he got run over uh, to Majora halfway through the season. So he hasn't, so he hasn't ridden for like almost a year. Um, it's around about nine months since his race. So that's why, and with Bobby, okay, let's build you back up gradually, slowly but surely, and try and keep it all together and, and try and avoid any uh, mishaps, you know. So if we can keep him clear of injury, you know, I believe Bobby can be in there, top five, top six. I mean, aside from being a powerhouse of a rider, he's, he's a fantastic personality as well. I imagine having him in the team is very easy, very, yeah. very sort of congenial he's, he's way to He's just a nice work. kid, he's just a nice kid. Um, they both are actually. Uh, Gauthier is also very, very similar. They're both nice, nice kids. Maybe from my side, maybe a bit too nice the other side of the fence, you know? Um, maybe they don't know. What are you saying, Roger? <laughs> <laughs> maybe the, the, uh, the gentleman stops there, yeah. doesn't it? Well, we're just looking, uh, just been watching the, the footage from Qatar. Obviously, um, he made the, he was third in the race and in the second race got third overall. What was the mood like within the camp generally after that race? Good start or was yeah, yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, uh, Everybody quite happy. Um, obviously, we had a lot of HRC bosses. You know, they I think they also come to look at Qatar because they've got the uh, MotoGP there later. Uh, so they come to look at that, but also they're very, very interested in motocross now uh, and pushing it hard. Mm. So yeah, in general, yeah, quite happy with the way it started. Yeah. So everybody, everybody and then, in the team. And then what about Thailand? Obviously, when we look at the results, seventh and sixth, sixth overall. Yeah. Doesn't tell the whole story, does it? Gauthier no. particularly was very, very unlucky, but maybe one of the fastest guys on track. That's yeah. When we go back on look at the data, look at look at the uh, look at everything before he was one of the fastest, but he went down. This didn't is amazing, he? Isn't and this it? is the crash. This is, uh... Yeah, just how that didn't end up a lot lot worse than it was is like oh oi, oi. And when you um, watch it again, Tyler almost changed his line, didn't he? He was sort of squaring yeah, off at Bobby. Uh, sorry, Gautier was maybe closer than he thought he was yeah. as well, and it was just that. It's, racing it's incident. a racing incident. Yeah. It's it's nothing. You, you don't blame anybody for something like that. But fortunately, he went down. Okay, yeah, and it was just like oh. That was a simple tip over that but, one. You know, should he have been not quite so much the gentleman and just you know pushed his way through? You know, that's the question. He is very much a gentleman, and mm. and and I think 
maybe he didn't get good enough starts and he should have been just uh, just in there a little bit higher off the yeah, start. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I, I don't envy your position, Roger, because you can put so much investment, so much time and effort and energy in, and then some little incident like that can just, you know, wreck a season, can't as, it? As three, seen, three races out. As we've seen so many times, you know. Um, and, and it happens. We know this is motocross, you know. It, and, and on the road race side, you can carry a bit of an injury, you know. Uh, but here, the body, you're caught out. You don't carry yeah. no injury. You know, the slightest thing, a, a broken little finger. It's nothing, mm. you know. Uh, but it's when like you go out, fifteen and ride points there, every weekend as well. Yeah, you it's know. too much for him. It's too yeah. much, and, and you can't carry an injury, and that's why we've got to keep on that podium, but try and stay injury free. Yeah. All right. Well, look, Rog, we are out of time. Just briefly, though, before we go, um, first impression to the track. Spoken to the riders. How are they? Amazing. Uh, the, everybody was amazed to come here yesterday and see the whole setup. And uh, yeah, track. It's a different sort of track. It's quite. It's. It, it looks sandy, but it's quite hard underneath. It's. Yeah. It's a little bit slippy in places. So everybody's got to be a little bit careful. Or else they're going to be losing the front or the back, not knowing which one's going to go first. So yeah, they've got to be careful. All right. Well, we are out of time here at Patagonia, Argentina. My thanks for uh, our guests this weekend. Of course, Jeremy Siwa, Rockstar Energy Suzuki Europe, Roman Fevre, Yamaha Factory Racing, uh, Roger Harvey, HRC General Manager, MXGP, and of course, as always, Adam Wheeler on TrackOffRoad.com. Well, round three is just around the corner. The qualifying races will be up a little bit later on. They'll be interesting all by themselves. But tomorrow, we hope you can join us for the race day. Let's see what happens here. We've had two different winners so far this year in MXGP. Jeffy Hurlings is running away with it in MX2 at the moment. Maybe he's thinking uh, top step of the podium again. But in MXGP, anything can happen. We hope you can join us for all of the racing live tomorrow when it happens here in Argentina. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time when we go back to Italy in Europe in about two weeks. See you then. Bye for now. <laughs>